We would like to thank our sponsors, Getaway Today. Use Getaway Today for all of your vacation planning needs. You'll get exclusive perks, great discounts, and the best customer service. Most importantly, their services are always free and easy from experienced and passionate agents who love to make your vacation dreams come true. Head on over to getawaytoday.com from the link in our show notes to see their exclusive deals and you can call 855-GETAWAY and let them know Walt's apartment sent you to start planning your next vacation today. One little spark of inspiration is at the heart (laughs) of all creation. Spark a dream that we're meant to follow. You're listening to the Extra Magic Hour, brought to you by Waltz Apartment Podcast and the Diz Insider. Join the team in the studio as they bring you the spirit of Disney through park news, history, and tips and tricks to make your Disney parks vacation even more magical. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Extra Magic Hour, where Disney Parks podcast brought to you by Getaway Today and the Disneysider.com. I'm so excited to be back doing another Disney Parks show. We got so much stuff to talk about. I'm Sean. I'm joined by my two amazing co hosts, Sam. How are you tonight? Fantastic. Good to have you back. And how's summer treating you? It's good. It's busy. I'm actually good. subbing for summer school the next two days, so oh, I'll be fun. back at school the next couple of days. There you go. Brianna, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> You're good. Okay. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yep. All right. So good to see you. Good to have you both on here again. We are joined by new Waltz Apartment host, or what do we call you? Waltz Apartment host, Marvel Tribe host, just our new host, Lewis from the Marvel Tribe. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. A little extra magic never hurt nobody. That's right. I figured I'd bring you in here, even it up with me, with the, you know, me, two guys, two girls now. So I'm not <laughs> feeling over overpowered here. So I said, Lewis, come in here, help me out. So we have a fun show to talk about tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about my trip this weekend. I went to the Walt Disney Museum. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, just that experience overall. Touched on a little bit on the live show, but uh, amazing place. We're going to get into there. We're going to do some, uh, we've got some parks news. We got our imagined near feature. We're going into the women now, right? Okay. We are women who, of imagineering. Who do we got? Who are we start today? With? We have Maggie Irvine Elliott, who was Dick Irvine's daughter. Okay. Is Dick Irvine's daughter? Is she related to Kim? She would be, right? Is that Kim? Do you know? Mm, not imagine, sure. Imagine near now, Kim Irvine. Yeah, I know who she is, but okay. Not sure. Okay, fair enough. We're getting that some Disney parks, did you know? But let's get into it. Um, so this weekend, Father's Day weekend, um, some friends said, "Hey, come down. We're going to treat you to to a fun weekend." And they, I, I went down there on uh, Saturday and uh, started off with Top Golf. Top Golf that has nothing to do with Disney, but let me tell you, Top Golf is the coolest damn place ever. Um, I don't know if you know what this is. You basically, it's a huge. It's like a three story driving range. Um, and you play, you compete against each other, like how far you can drive the ball or whatever. They had an Angry Birds game that you had to actually aim where you were shooting the ball to knock down. But you'd shoot, and you look back on the screen, see what blocks you knock. Top Golf, if you're there, anyone needs to go to Top Golf. Absolutely great stuff. Has anyone here been to Top Golf? No. So much fun. You have Sam? Yeah, I've been once. It is fun. Yeah. Where did you go to it? In Chicago? We have a, yeah. yeah. It's outside of Chicago in the suburbs. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They're all like in the suburbs. I was, I, I except Las Vegas. I noticed that most of them, like there's San Jose, Roseville, Portland, I think, or Hillsborough area, whatever. But yeah, check out Top Golf. This is not an ad for them, but it was fun. So Disney, well, the Walt Disney Family Museum. Um, I I was completely blown away by this. And let me just walk you through a little bit of of what you see there. So 
you get there, you drive into this beautiful park. It's called the Presidio in San Francisco, which used to be like an army base, I guess, way back when. And you can still tell that they look, all the buildings just look like, like barracks, basically. Huge park in the middle. You look off to your right, the Golden Gate Bridge is right there. There's a crystal clear day, so it was perfect. Alcatraz is out there. I guess the weather's not always that nice in San Francisco, but it was absolutely amazing weather, probably like 70. But anyway, you get in there. We check in and we walk in and you, the first thing you see, you walk in, there's a bust of Walt Disney's head right there. You know, you're like, damn, okay, that's, that's cool. And the girl's like, you think that's cool? Wait till you see what else we have, you know. Um, you walk in and you just start going through. It's basically his whole life. It starts with when he was born, um, when they moved to, to Hollywood, um, creating Oswald. Um, losing Oswald, which was a big part of the museum, explaining how they lost Oswald, which is a shitty deal, actually, if you if you really think about it. Um, then they they make I I, don't, I think this was bef- I want to say their company Laughagram I believe went bankrupt before before Oswald. Then they created Oswald, got some money from Universal. Then they lost Oswald about a year later. Then they needed something else, so they created Mickey Mouse. Uh, originally named Mortimer Mouse because Lillian didn't like um, the name Mick Mortimer. Walt's idea was was Mortimer, so she said no. And he said about Mickey, she says, yeah, that works much better. And they just walked through his whole life when he got into the to the military, how he forged his way into the military. You all know that, right? He forged you know into the military. Um, the coolest thing about this, I want to say, is I said on the on the live show is like you're sitting there looking at something. And then there's like a video playing and you can pick up this little like comb like you would see like from like Little House in the Prairie. You put up to your ear, you put up your ear, you push the button and it's Walt talking. And he's telling you, I remember this time when we did this. And he talked about when they went bankrupt. I'm I'm jumping around. But um, so it goes from that. It goes into the creation of Mickey Mouse, which you have this huge Mickey Mouse section. There's like three glass cases of just all this uh, like original Mickey Mouse artifacts and stuffed animals and figures and pens and pencils and, and anything you can think of. It's amazing. And then the cameras that they use, I'm asking the, the, the people in there, is all this stuff real? Is this really this stuff? And they're like, yeah, it's le- legitimately everything was from Walt Disney. I mean, telegrams on telegrams, telegrams of when they lost Oswald, telegrams of when they did this, telegrams when they moved to California. Then you get into... You know, then they get, you get into their creating Steamboat Willie with, and there's just this huge wall. It's like every, I mean, it's probably 30 feet long by 10 feet tall of just every, every, uh, what is it? Frame, Cell? frame of, of, of the cartoon. You're like, holy crap. And then in a few of them, there's like a video, like in the middle. And it's just, that's the coolest thing. So they get into that. And then he goes, you go into, Snow White, because Snow White is what created, what is what started everything. You know, first live action animated with music, blah, blah, blah. And then you're going through the success of Disney. He's doing great. They go with Dumbo, blah, blah, blah. You walk around, you walk through this big, long glass corridor. And at the end of the corridor, is a, there's a park bench. And if you know the idea of the park bench, I don't think it's the original park bench. It could be one of them that was from the park. But um, Walt Disney thought of Disneyland sitting on a park bench in Griffith Park, California, said, hey, I want to I want to create something where adults and kids can chill together, basically, and, and have fun together. Then you walk around the corner, and you're standing basically in Walt's backyard, and it goes into his love of trains, and you're like, this is really cool. Then sitting there is the Carrollwood or Candlewood Express. It's one of those two. I think it's Carrollwood Express, the actual train that was – in his yard in Los Feliz, California, that he had created. Bill Evans helped him create it, helped him landscape it. And all this is just written there. And it's the actual train. And I asked, again, I'm asking the curator, is that real too? And they're like, again, everything is real. And I'm like, and I'm just like, holy shit. So then you walk around this corner and you're up above and you're looking down on this huge model of, um, of Disneyland. And it's basically Disneyland through the eyes of Walt from when he con- he con- conceived it to when he died. So everything in this it, it was his idea. You see Space Mountain in there. They said this is through like 66, but Space Mountain was Walt's idea before Tony Baxter made it. 
I think it was Tony Baxter that made Space Mountain, correct? It was. But you see you see Space Mountain. You see the haunted mansion. I bored I bored Brianna. She left. But uh but you see you see the haunted mansion, you see Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I did it. We did a, a reel on it on our Instagram. So if you see that, check it. I did a video of this where I went down and just kind of zoomed around it. And the friends I was with, they were taking pictures and they held up a camera. And the lady that's just standing there watching people by this model says, oh, no, 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 please don't. Please don't hold your camera over the model because they've had cameras. They've had phones dropped onto it where it's damaged it. And you're just like, no, but so they go through all of the Disneyland stuff and and you see like there's an Utopia car there. I could talk about this for an hour, but I won't. I promise. I just want to, but it just blew my mind. I, I We were in there for two and a half hours. I probably could have stayed for another three. Honestly, there, there was so much to read, so much to look at, so much to you not really touch. There's a few things you could, a couple interactive things you could like make sound. Like they played the, the, the cartoon and you had to hit certain buttons to make the sounds go at the right spot. Um, Sam, you have friends that, your friend is she a curator there or is she does she run it or yeah Christine, she, right? uh, she yeah she she works um at the Walt Disney Family Museum I was gonna say um for anybody who can't travel to the Walt Disney Family Museum they do host online events where you can register and you can sit in on different like guest lecturers who are mm-hmm. talking about different things in in uh, the Walt Disney Family history or they do like drink mixers that are really fun, but it's all like virtual. So you can register for those events on the Walt Disney Family okay. Museum website too. And they're not yeah. very expensive. Okay. Um, one thing I was, my, my biggest takeaways from this was that the, the dude was a genius and never took no for an answer. Um, an amazing love for his wife. Just, just you, you, you I, the words, just how much he cared for her and how much he did for her. And I, I remember, I remember the fact that they adopted their, their second daughter, but I didn't realize it because she couldn't have kids. They, they told her she, if she had another, they would be very bad if she had no kids. So, so they adopted their second daughter and his love for his family, which is why he did everything he did. Um, the whole Disneyland, just the Disneyland part of it. And then you walk around the corner and it shows, it shows um, his future plans. He has the future plans for Epcot and for for the Florida project. And then you read this. Um, there's just huge writing on the wall, and it's from his daughter. And it's and it basically breaks down his last day. Um, he talks. They talk about how he was talking. To, he was talking to Roy. He went back into the hospital because there were some issues. So he's back in the hospital getting checked over. Um, he was supposed to just be there overnight. And then um, Roy was in there and then they knew it was kind of that time. Roy, they, they sat in there and were, the, she said the 12 by 12 ceiling tiles in the, in the ceiling, he was saying that will go here. And it was all about the Florida project. And he made Roy promise that the Florida project would happen. He died the next morning at nine 30 in the morning. So just kind of suddenly um, then you walk into a room where it's all the posters and the billboards and the um, radio TV announcement of the guy saying that Walt Disney passed away and you're like, Holy crap. And then, so you walk through that and you think it's over. And then you're in this white room. Like I said, it's, it's like a, maybe like an oblong kind of room. I would say like, you know, huge monitors on both sides and this white, this white, like leather couch in the middle, but it's like, there's no back on it. So you just sit on this. So you, you sit there and you watch Walt's life from beginning to end on, on one side. And you're like, damn, so the guy I was with, he says, he said, okay, let's switch. I'm like, what do you mean switch? He goes, it's different. So you switch, you sit and you watch it. It's basically the same thing, but just a few different. I, I think we sat in there for a half hour. I was having an emotional day anyway, because it was Father's Day. But just all the all of the uh the feels and everything, that play that place, I need to go back again and again. It was so amazing. Um, I want to talk about that a little bit on the show. I didn't mean to ramble on for it for 10 minutes, but it was, it was amazing. Um, I told Brianna, I said, you're, you're, you're out here, you're down, you're in this area. You need to find a way to get up there. Lewis, same thing. Yeah. You, you guys, you guys are down in the same area right now. Get up there. It is the coolest thing ever. I, and it's, I guess I don't know how much it was. I didn't pay for it, but it was so, I guess it's pretty inexpensive. 
and it was just amazing from beginning to end. You're like, holy crap, there's the seven. I put I put this on my personal Facebook page, the seven Oscars, the one Oscar and the seven mini, miniature Oscars for Snow White. You're like, that's real. You know, you just saw that in his office, but all this stuff is there. And it's just a, and then the, the whole Walt's apartment section, you walk in, you walk through all the things and be, I turned around. I'm like, holy crap. And it's two chairs, a table and a lamp. And then there's the window of Walt's apartment. And I'm like, this is absolutely crazy. So I took some pictures with that. And um, as we were leaving, I walked out of the, uh, into the guest, into the uh, gift shop. And a lady said, oh my God, I love your tattoo. And it was the one of Walt and Mickey. And I said, oh, cool. And she goes, what's that? And it was my Walt's apartment, actual the tattoo on my other arm. And she goes, oh my God, I've never seen that before. And I said, oh, thank you. And I told her, I said, yeah, I do a podcast. And she goes, oh, wow, that's so cool. And she says, you want to know something cool? And I said, what's that? She says, we have the actual lamp here, but we can't bring it out because it's so fragile. And I said, why would you tell me that? <laughs> you have this here, you know. And, but, but it was the coolest thing. Uh, again, if you guys, anyone who listens to this show, if, if, if you can get to San Francisco, which was beautiful in itself. I'd only been there a few times. I'd spend the day in San Francisco. We went to Ghirardelli Square. We had ice cream. Uh, we walked down, is it Pier 39, Pier whatever, that Embarcadero? It's the coolest thing. And you can see Alcatraz out there. Like I said, it was clear to like 6 o'clock at night, so it's usually not that clear that late, I guess. I will stop rambling about Walt Disney World Museum, but if the Walt Disney Family Museum, if you can do it, go check it out for sure. Yeah. All right, Lewis, are we carpooling? <laughs> because I'll- I just put $6.50 gas in my car. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely down to carpool, but I got an idea that I'll throw your guys' way afterwards. Huh? I got an idea yeah. that I'm going to throw your guys' way I after love the Lewis. show. I love Lewis's ideas. All right. Um, okay, so let's get into the show. I didn't mean to I go on too long. I also heard, wear waterproof mascara. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, it, I, if I wasn't with a group of people that would, that had kids... I probably would just, I mean, I'm not trying to get into too much, but I, I I had a, I was having a rough day. This made it all better. It made me, I just, I I sat there at the end by myself in that room and they all walked out and I'm not going to lie. I teared up for a good couple of minutes and it was, it was just like a release of everything. And it made Mm -hmm. me feel, but, but this was, it was father's day, but this was the father of Disney, if that makes sense of Disneyland, which on, I got the dude's, you know, tattoo on my arm and it just brought, it made me admire him so much more, if that makes sense. And I'm not trying to get all gushy mushy, but it it was just, it was, it was a, like, a, oh, geez. It was a freaking, it was a freaking amazing, what is 1640? <laughs> it was a freaking amazing weekend. It was, it was so good. It was so, so good. And I would recommend to anyone, even if you're not really a Disney fan, I'm sorry. Oh, it's 1640. I'll take it out. Remind I me. I just of that. love that you're making yourself edit this time. <laughs> <laughs> now I actually have to listen. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, yeah. I I'll stop saying it. Just go if you can go. Go. I I think it's awesome though. Like you shared that you l- left everything, and that's the same idea and vision of what Disneyland was supposed to be, where you mm-hmm. leave yesterday. And to the world of tomorrow and fantasy, like you forget everything. The whole reason why the berm was built in Disneyland. So it's amazing that an extension of that is still something that is doing that even to today, even years later. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Were you a geek as a kid? Did you wear out your thumbs every afternoon on a game pad? Are you a family man now aspiring to reach super dad status? Hi there. We're the Parenticons, three dads, all big geeks, sharing stories from our own lives as parents, as geeks, and our eternal quest to bridge the two worlds. If you're looking for real talk about being a dad, hot takes on geek culture, and how to raise kids to appreciate the finer points of geek life, you you found found it. it. So grab your phasers, sabers, wands, roll your D20 dice, and don't forget the diaper bag. You're listening to the Parenticons. (laughs) 
sorry. I, I'm not laughing at what you said. Um, Sam put in the comment 16 forward to remove Sean saying effing. So, okay. So, so I know. Thank you, Sam. But yeah, no, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, and again, I was already having so many emotions the day. I'm not going to dwell on it, but if you know me, you know me. So whatever, that's just, I'm an emotional guy. And that just brought it up. Hey, I pretty much, I'm a crybaby, and I cried a few times that day. I'm not going to lie. Um, before we even got there, I'm not going to lie. It was, it was just, a, it was a tough day. Father's Day. My life is different now, so um, that's all I'll say about that. Let's move on to. Uh, I, I cried all the time for uh, wishes. Did you guys ever see that fireworks show when that uh, Julie Andrews did that intro? Oh man. Oh yeah, I for sure. All the time. Yeah, all yeah. your wishes. Yeah. yeah. I cried freaking like four times. I was at Disneyland. Um, the fireworks. The Disneyland Forever fireworks, or I'm sorry, Brianna, to bring them up. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'm going to cry right now. I hope they I will uh, never I, get to see Disneyland Forever. You will. Fireworks. I think they're going to be there for, they're going to be there through D23, uh, I would think, sure. for sure. So, um, yeah, D23, we're going to hook it up down there. We're all hooking up again. So, um, because I'm there for four, I'm, I'm in the park for four days, even though I have two days at D23, but I have four reservations in a row for, you got three? Awesome. I'm there Wednesday, Thursday, like Friday, three. Saturday. You got, yeah, I can't wait for that just to be down there again. You know, I was listening to a podcast today. You know, this is kind of news. They they announced last week that Oogie Boogie Bash was coming back. They announced the pricing already. Um, for D23 members, if you like, you can get a special Oogie Boogie Bash during D23 for only $180 a person. Yeah. So it starts sweet, at six. Sweet deal of six $180. Sweet. Yeah, it's. You know, I was listening. I think it was DL Weekly I was listening to today, which they do a great um, Disneyland podcast. And they were talking about the fact that, you know, if it was a real, you know, bonus to be a D23 member, you would get like some kind of discount. Oh, you know what I mean? Not charge you the same price they charge you for Halloween Day. So, you know, so but it is what it is. And it's a it's a money making venture. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be making Boogie Boogie because it's during D23. But I just want to be there taking all that in and soaking all that in. And that's going to be stressful enough trying to get, you know, passes to panels and all that stuff. So Boogie Boogie Bash tickets go on sale, I believe, the 28th for um, for D23 and Magic Key Holders. And then um, the next day for the general public. So there's the start of our news. We went into it early. Uh, next news story. Miss. Low decky. What's the next story? Um, minivans are coming back. Um, not yet for airport transportation, but on June 29th, you will be able to use the Lyft app to get a minivan to take you around Walt Disney World Resort. So if you want to go somewhere to, for dining or if you need to get from your resort to a park and you don't want to wait for other transportation, you can call a minivan now using the Lyft app. So now, wait a second. You unavailable mini- for a while. You say minivan. You mean like an actual minivan? It's not just a minivan. It's an M I N N I E van. Well, right? it is a van that is decorated with red. It's red and it's got white spots and it looks like Minnie Mouse. So yes, it's those are the like minivans. The joke. It's like the ultimate yes. van. Is- <laughs> and they're super cute. Yeah, no. They are cute. Would you would you ride in them? Would you use them? Um, usually we end up renting a car, um, Mm -hmm. because we like being able to go off property if we want to. And we usually add like beach trips or cruises, stuff like that to where we need to get to, um, Cocoa Beach or Port Canaveral. So we usually don't need them, but I wouldn't be opposed to using one. There are probably a few nights where you could, I could, I well, I mean, I usually have friends that are driving, but if I didn't have friends that were driving, yes, I would need them to get back to my resort. Brianna, Lewis, would you use the minivan? Uh, 100%. Absolutely. Because it's a minivan, right? Mini. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I ride the trams at Disneyland. It's just a whole other experience. Yeah. Brianna? Uh, not for the prices that I heard they were. Um, oh, really? Yeah. What are you hearing? I heard like $75. What? Yeah. A person? Yeah, never mind. I'll walk not a person, car. like a, a group, like, like a, for a ride. Yeah, but it's not going from the airport, so that seems right. really high. So it's like through park. And again, that's just what I heard. Okay. And I never used it when it was there before, so I cannot confirm those prices. Yeah, all it says is to use the Lyft app to see the total cost and pay for the service. It includes up to two complimentary child seats if needed, um, which are required for ch- children under six years of age. 
Uh, it will vary based on distance traveled from pickup location to request a destination within Walt Disney World Resort. So just like you would for any other Uber or Lyft, it's based off, the price is based off of um, distance, but I'm sure it is a lot more per yeah, whatever. It looks like they're estimating somewhere between $30 and $50 or $20 yeah. and $50. So. Okay. Sam, what's our and next story? Because you, you wrote the news. Um, I want you to talk about this one, though. This is the park trips around the world. Weren't oh. you looking into it? Well, we ha- I had this story up last week for the for the for the live show, and we didn't get to it because we were rambling on, which is shocking. I know that we don't get to everything we're talking about on the live show. Wait till you wait till you, hopefully when you're listening to this, you've already listened to the the <laughs> live show with with Bill and Barry and Chris from Airbnb. Joey was there, Lewis was there. It was it was off the rails. It was classic classic Airbnb episode, basically just. And I, they, they kicked it up, took it a whole different level. So absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. So this here, $110,000 for a 20, I believe it's a 28-day or 24-day trip 24 per, per, day. per person. It's not like for couples or for a family. It's $110,000 per person. You will go to every Disney park. You start in Anaheim. And then you head, I believe... I want to say you head to China that way to Asia first and you work your way around um, through Egypt, through um, Hong Kong, Shanghai, through Egypt. You, you, you stop in Egypt for some reason. I was kind of read the itinerary. I was like looking at it. Um, Disneyland Paris, obviously. Then you come back, you end with like, I think like a week at Walt Disney World and you're left there because you don't go back to Anaheim. You have to figure out your ride home from for a month. So because, for a hundred and whatever thousand dollars, you can't get back to California. You can't. It's fine. But, but you're taking a, a you're you're on a private plane. It's a it's a private jet. So the, it's the jet taking you the whole time. So I can mean, we get a minivan to go back to Anaheim? <laughs> yeah, for seventy five dollars a person, sure. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, shit. If I had that much money, I would do it. I mean, heck yeah. I mean, but. It sounds absolutely amazing. If there's an article on the Disney Insider about it, and if you click on that article, then the, inside the article is a link to the itinerary. And it's, I mean, you're like I said, you're in LA, you hit DCA and and Disneyland, and you just go. And it's all Disney related. It's you know, I I think it's amazing. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you get VIP tours while you're in the parks, or is it like you're just free for all? I don't. wondering the parks like. I think there's some kind of VIP edge. I, I'm not, a, I'm uh, now you said that I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's, I, I mean, think so. It's still I would, out of my price range. I'm not yeah. sure to go. <laughs> yeah. Like if I could afford it, I would totally do it, but I would be super paranoid about missing things. And like, I would want somebody who knows each of the parks to be with me so that I get the best experience in each park. Because like, if you're going to drop me in to Paris, like, I'm not going to know how to find things in Disneyland Paris. Like, I'm going to be spending half my time trying to navigate the map. Right. So I want somebody who can show me the best time in the park there if I'm there for such a limited time. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I just brought up the article real quick. I'm going to whip through this really, really quick here. Um, it kind of, it does, it does say you're on a VIP configured, you're on a, you will travel a luxury V. Via a VIP configured Boeing 757 operated by Iceland Air. Um, you will have 24 days, cover six countries that include all 12 uniquely magical Disney theme parks, as well as three iconic landmarks, the Taj Mahal, Pyramids of Giza, and the Eiffel Tower. Giza. Throughout, Giza, sorry. Throughout the trip, you'll stay in world-class accommodations, including the opportunity to be a guest at the, at summit, at the summit Skywalker Ranch. Holy crap. I didn't... So... Bookings begin itinerary. First day you're in Los Angeles. Second day you're in Los Angeles, Anaheim. Then you go to San Francisco because you get to fly and take a tour of the Walt Disney Family Museum tour. You get a tour of the Lucasfilm Campus Tour, Summit Skywalker Ranch Dinner and Activities in San Francisco. You leave from San Francisco and you go to Oakland, to Anchorage, to Tokyo. That's a travel day. So then you're in Tokyo now. So obviously you're going to arrive in Tokyo, Tokyo, Disney. Disneyland or Tokyo Disney Sea on your own exploration optional. 
So when you're in Tokyo, also you have the Tokyo Disney Sea experience with Walt Disney Imagineering, Tokyo Disney Sea, and Tokyo Disneyland on your own exploration. Reserve seating, Tokyo Disneyland daytime parade, reserve seating, believe Sea of Dreams. And you're only seven days in at this point. Um, then you're on day nine, you're still in Tokyo. Day 10, you're in Shanghai. You fly to Shanghai in the afternoon, and then you continue on. Then you go to Shanghai, your Shanghai Disneyland tour, Shanghai Disneyland premier, premier tour, dinner, and exclusive locations, Shanghai Disneyland nighttime spectacular viewing area. Then you go to Hong Kong. Same thing. You're in Hong Kong on your own exploration or introduction to Hong Kong tour. Then you have another day in Hong Kong where you're in the park. Day 14, you're in uh, Agra. You'll fly to India, afternoon, activity options, Agra Fort tour. Then you go to the Taj Mahal on day 15. And day 16, you're in Cairo. Day 17, you arrive in Paris to where you go to, uh, yeah, you get to see Disneyland Paris. You get a VIP tour at Disneyland Park and Walt Disney Studio Park VIP, viewing Disneyland daytime show. Then you see the, you also see the Eiffel Tower while you're there. And then you fly to Orlando where you are at day 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 all in Orlando. And it looks like you're having VIP, you're having VIP tours. Yes. So to answer your question, Brianna, everything is a VIP, it looks like. Got it. You in? You in? I'm daydreaming right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm a pass. Uh, a hard pass because the well, money. Well, not a hard pass. Um, I don't like. I mean, if you're gonna encompass all of Disney, let's go all Disney. I mean, th- don't get me wrong, Taj Mahal and all that would be tight to see, but maybe on a separate trip because, like, if I was listening to it correctly, Shanghai, you're just kind of stopping in there for dinner and a special treat, and you're out. Like, no, it actually showed that you had some time in there too. I think I might have over skipped Shanghai. So, oh, okay, but I mean, I that and. I love Walt Disney World. Um, I've been there a million times virtually, never in person. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, I would scale back a few days of Walt Disney World to give us a little more time in Paris, Shanghai, Tokyo, and all that. But overall, fine-tuning it, I'm in. But, of course, if I had that money, absolutely I'd give it a shot. I like that you're on the same plane. I think that's cool that it's all just, you know – all the way, except the fact that they drop you off at <laughs> Florida. Like, hey, cool, get back to get back to California where your car is or wherever you know. You spent a hundred thousand dollars. We're leaving here in Orlando. <laughs> yeah, maybe they give you get you like a you know a commercial flight back or something. I don't know. That or just request like, hey, could we skip Egypt so I get right home? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, next story. All right, so we know that Lightyear came out in movies this past weekend. So we are now seeing a face character as Lightyear in the parks. Are we, though? Um, That's what they're (laughs) calling him. I don't anticipate he'll be around for very long. He kind of creeps me out. What do you guys think? (laughs) Yeah, he looks like a glorified Ken doll. Which is not what Buzz Lightyear looks like. I, I think I said I said on the live show he looks like Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider was Buzz Lightyear with the hair and everything, and just I, he might have even had a smolder. But it was. <laughs> so he's not the only character that we have in the parks or coming back to the parks. So we are actually getting a lot of our character meet and greets back in the Magic Kingdom um, in the next month or so. Maribel. So. Well, Maribel is being added. Maribel from Encanto, Miguel from Coco, uh, Nick and Judy from Zootopia, and Max, Goof, and Moana will be joining the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade in Magic Kingdom Mm -hmm. Um, on June 26th. uh, Minnie is going to be rejoining Mickey at the Town Square Theater at Magic Kingdom in their 50th anniversary attire. So that'll be good to see the two of them back together for meet and greets. Um, Chip and Dale's campfire sing-along at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground is also returning on July 6th. So more things just like coming back into normal at the resorts too. Mm -hmm. Peter Pan and Snow White will be doing their meet and greets in Fantasyland again. Um, Star Wars Launch Bay is re 
turning so you can see your favorite Star Wars characters. And then in the next few months, we are expecting to see Aladdin, Jasmine, Merida, Pooh, Tigger, and some of our other favorites returning to their meet and greet locations in Magic Kingdom. So Nice. And I did hear that Darth Vader is actually at the launch bay again at Disneyland. Yep. Uh, he's he's back. So you got Darth Vader there and Buzz Lightyear or a knockoff version of Buzz Lightyear. I, I, mm. I want to go back. I want to go back real quick to we talked a little bit about it on the live, but Brianna wasn't part of that. Um, you've seen Lightyear, right? Yes. What'd you think of it? It was fine. OK, that's a, <laughs> it's about what everyone says. It was, it was OK. Um, did you notice the building in there that looks just like Space Mountain? No. So you had the turn up. That's what they call the turn up. And the building next to it has a a shape of just like Space Mountain. Uh, there's rumors that they are going to be um, changing Space Mountain to that possibly. Uh, they talked. We talked on the live. Hopefully, this just be like an overlay and not a permanent thing. But I mean, they've had some horrific things done with Space Mountain in in California. Um, I remember back when it was was it green and rust colored. Remember that? I think. I think you might be a little bit young, Brianna, but they actually, um, it was like their like journey. And do you remember that Lewis? Mm -hmm. I, it, it was terrible. It was like a, it looked like the coloring on the grand Californian. It was the same color, like they're dark green oh. and Brown. It was terrible. Oh, Look it up. When you can. It's, it's terrible, but I hope they don't change it. If they do change, I hope it's just like an overlay and not like a permanent thing. So yeah. On the meet and I'm greet really Disneyland, oh. the, uh, Buzz Lightyear's backdrop. Uh, if you're looking at it in the bottom right, they have a small image of Space Mountain as well. Because they changed his meet and greet. It was at the Tomorrowland Theater mm -hmm. where the Star Wars show used to be. And then now it's up where the Fast Pass Distribution Center used to be for Space Mountain. Oh. What were you going to say, Brianna? I said, I can't imagine that they would change that permanently. Especially with the reviews they're getting. Well, there's going to be a second movie, let's be honest. Well, yeah, because I saw that end. Yeah, well, we saw it. Haley didn't want to stick around, so Sam <laughs> left. <laughs> oh, Haley was like on board, let's go. Yeah. Well, I was actually Googling it sitting there, you know, like what's going to happen because I, I'm like, is there how many? There's like, there's like three of three, you know, mm -hmm. post credit scenes. But yeah, um, there'll be another one. I think they're going to try to ride this for as much as they can. If it makes money, they're going to do another one. Just like Bill said, you know, money's money and they're going to do what they can to make money. Yep. Um, oh, well, next story. Um, there is some new merch coming out just to talk about it briefly. Um, we haven't had a lot of new Indiana Jones merch in a very long time, but they are putting out some new, um, merch i believe next month looks like there's a goblet and some statuesque kind of things they haven't released too much on it yet but that will be coming um and then the last article oh wait two more um stitch has a stage show in tomorrowland at disneyland now um yeah oh uh, tomorrowland terrace where yeah. it used to be oh okay. yeah okay Yep. So he has a stage show now. Um, and it, it looks, it looks fun. Like it looks like a giant dance party. <laughs> so that is something you can look for in Disneyland and Disney recently filled out a patent this the past week uh, for something that looks like virtual lockers or like mobile lockers. So you put your stuff, and this is just patented, so it's not coming to us anytime soon. But you put your stuff in the locker, and, like, you can call it to you throughout <laughs> the park. Come on. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So we've got an animal approximately seven and a half feet tall, human-like arms and legs. The face is not like that of a man or an ape, but something in between. Additionally, the hands have sparse hair, yet the palms are bare with five digits, including an opposable human-like thumb. However, this creature is not human. Repeat, not human. Subscribe to Bigfoot Classified today as we explore what may be the biggest Bigfoot cover-ups in history. Visit BigfootClassified.com and subscribe to Bigfoot Classified, available where you get your podcast. Hey, 
if it's shaped like Wally, I'm all in. Oh, come on. So <laughs> this is this is just what um, I've been reading this week is like they put a patent in for it. We'll see. We I will can't see. wait to trip over these. In the oh, park. Uh, yeah. How would that work? <laughs> Seriously. Disneyland is so small. How would that work? I feel work? like there's got to be a range. Like, I mean, it's so crowded. Yeah. I, just... I mean, I know Walt Disney World's bigger. It's, there's also a lot more people walking around. Yeah, but my God, I, I, I yeah, like Brianna said, you're going to trip over this thing all the time. Maybe right? they're going to fly. Who knows? <laughs> they're going to fly. They're, they talked about getting rid of the no-fly zone. Yeah, that's true. Maybe they're oh. going to fly to you and just like sure. land yeah, then, in front of you or hover then, above you. And then when one fails, it falls on your head and then Disney's sued. And then it's, it's Listen, no- I didn't say the technology was perfect yet. I said there was a patent in order, like patent in place <laughs> for it. Um, speaking of creating things, Imagineering, uh, Disney shocked everybody when they said that they were going to be relocating 2,000 Imagineers from California to Lake Nona in Florida um, for a new Imagineering uh, location warehouse Mm -hmm. Um, that has now been pushed to 2026. A lot of the speculation that it, um, uh, well, I'm going to tell you what a lot of the speculation is. Okay. Um, With Florida's don't say gay bill, a lot of Imagineers um, are hesitant about moving to a state where they are not going to feel welcomed and they're having to leave their families or relocate their families and completely uproot their lives to go somewhere that they're not necessarily going to feel included. That's so that's, sad. Um, that's so that sad. is, or you can't get your children vaccinated because they're not ordering the vaccines for <sighs> children there. <laughs> Talk about medical freedom. Jeez. That's... So that's, that's a whole nother show, man. We could I could talk about that for days. I just talk about Florida. That is just one of the speculations on why they've delayed it. Obviously, they haven't come out right and said why. When hasn't come out and said why it's not relocating yet, that, or why they're that, pushing it till twenty twenty six. But is that, is that part of Reedy Creek? Is it in that area? Or is it no. a different location? Not okay. It's, All right. Yeah. Because I thought I might have to do with that too, because of that whole thing. That's no. that's that's just gonna flop, by the way. I hope everyone understands that. That the people in that county or town or whatever have to actually vote it in there. I don't think Disney employers are gonna vote themselves out. It just doesn't make sense to me. But again, whole nother topic, whole nother stupid stupidity in life is just don't get me going. I'm sorry. <laughs> it sucks that that people have to feel that way, that they can't feel safe or comfortable somewhere, and it just drives me crazy. Uh, well, for anybody who is in Florida listening, there are some new <laughs> uh, <laughs> some new <laughs> hotel discounts for Florida residents from July 8th through September 8th. So the special rates at Walt Disney World Resort hotels are available to Florida residents for stays on most nights from July 8th through September 8th, 2022. Um, an example is that they can get Florida residents can get a standard room at one of three Disney's all-star resorts for just 129, 129 plus tax per night. Damn. And um, they can get other dis- discounted rates at Bay Lake Tower, the cabins at Fort Wilderness, pretty much almost anywhere um, that is not deluxe. Mm-hmm. So they have a limited number of rooms allocated for that offer. And um if you're adding more adults or children to the rooms, obviously there's going to be more. But if you're a Florida resident, you can go ahead and check that out. And Brianna, if they needed help figuring out those rates and how they can apply those discounts, who could they contact? Oh, man. Um, I think it's someone called like a Getaway Today. Yeah. Hey, so look can... at you guys. Look at you. <laughs> look at us. It's like a well oiled machine this. right here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you can go to getawaytoday.com or hit them up on the phone if you like talking on the phone and not a millennial. Um, and ask them about these rates and book your next Walt Disney World trip. And if you want to go to Disneyland, you can also contact them and check out uh, waltzapt.com and mm-hmm. click the link that says book a Disneyland trip and check out the websites we got there. Yes. <laughs> Because Brianna redid the website. 
She crushed it. All I did was change the background to the main screen. <laughs> well, I was like, working. and then mine's still old because I was like, and then I tried to change it to the background, and I was like, now you can't see my font. <laughs> so no, we're 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 dealing with. It. We're working with Wix. We're working on trying to figure out the website. We have an IT guy on the show, but he's just so busy, you know. But um, yeah, getaway today. They're amazing. Check them out. Um, I want to ask you guys one more thing before we go into. I believe we're going to go into Imagineers next, right, Sam? Um, did you guys see the cheese whiz video? No. Okay. No. Okay. So some dumbass at Disneyland on big thunder mountain was going up the going. You saw it. I did up, see. Yeah. I did not see this. And I'm not ready. A can of cheese whiz as he's going through the ride, like a complete idiot. Um, what a waste. I hope. <laughs> Yeah, a waste for one, and I'm sure that they were really excited that they had to probably shut the ride down and clean all that up, and I hope that guy got banned for life, and they, then they put it on TikTok because, you know, it's cool to put stuff like that on TikTok, like, you know, putting that, and then people are sticking their feet out of the logs on Splash Mountain and running their feet across the water like that on Splash Mountain and on – people got to be idiots. Listen, the worst thing that I have done is add to the hair tie collection. <laughs> What's the hair tie collection? On Everest. On Everest. Oh. You get up to low. You get up top. You just... Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you All just I... look down and there's tons of hair ties. Really? <laughs> Worst thing I've done is, you know, touch the water in Pirates. That's it, you know, because to see how cold it is. I've was. done that in Small World. Yeah, I, I think I've done there too. But, I mean, the feet and the cheese whiz. <laughs> who, who gets the idea that, hey, I know. We're gonna take our cheese whiz. We're gonna go on Big Thunder Mountain, and we're gonna spray it on the attraction. Who's who's with me? Who's gonna feel uh, me doing this? Dumb people. Yeah, they are dumb. I just I can't wait guys... to see. I can't wait to see how many cheese whiz cans get confiscated at security from here on out. Yeah, no oh doubt. Right? They're, gonna, they're gonna be like, nope, can't have that anymore. <laughs> he, yeah, but I hope that guy got a lifetime ban. That's all. I'm, that's yeah. all I'm saying about that. So, hope we didn't hurt the goat. All right. All right, now, Sam, tell us about some Imagineering stuff. I will. Today, I am going to talk about one of the women in Imagineering, and I'm actually going to talk about her the next couple episodes of Extra Magic Hour because she has tons of stories. Oh but um, we're going to talk oh. about Maggie Irvine Elliott. So she is the daughter of legendary Imagineer Dick Irvine. Um she was a Disney child, like Walt gave her Christmas presents and birthday presents. And, you know, she had special treatment when she came, went into the parks and, you know, special passes and her birthdays were all Disney birthdays and her movie, like Disney movie premieres. That was her life growing up. Um, so she was around the concept of Imagineering her entire life. When she was going into college, she had, her, her parents were like, let's get you a summer job. And her, her dad said, you know, we've got an opening at WED this summer. Why don't you come and apply? She applied. She got the position. So she was just holding on for a summer job. Um, the first thing that they did when she got her summer job was take her to Leota Tombs <laughs> and have her start working on pieces for Enchanted Tiki Room. And she, right after that, worked with Harriet Burns. And, like, she just went through all of these, like, no, like notorious women who created, like, all of these animatronics, all of, like, the, the costumes. Mary Blair, like, she went right to Mary Blair right after that. So she had the best mentors. But at this time, women were still kind of treated like crap. Uh, and they were not treated as fairly as the men were. So Maggie Irvine Elliott actually pushed the envelope a little bit for women in, in Imagineering. So when it was time for her to go back to school, she told her parents, listen, I still want to work at WED, uh, but I'm going to go to school too. So she was doing both. They gave her uh, a position. They let her stay on permanently. And then a couple of years later, I think it was like a year and a half later, she decided she wasn't going back to school. She was going to take a full time position at WED. She wanted to work in um, Imagineering. And pretty much everything that they asked her to do, she was like a pro at and like 
they brought in like industrial sewing machines and stuff because she had been working on one that she had brought from home that wasn't working well. And her dad's like, I don't know about this. And they tested her on it and they never questioned anything she could do ever again. After that, she just stepped in and was natural and a pro at everything um, that they asked her to do. So after a few years, she said, I'm still only making $2. Oh, geez. Um, I'm still only making $2 and I want to make more. And she kind of like wanted to do the things that men were doing in Imagineering. So like men got to use saws, women were allowed to sew. And she was very rebellious. So she went to, after three years, had received a raise. She went to her boss and she said, like, what's required to get a raise and to move on to the next level? And he said that he had to be able to use the saws and she had to be able to use the saws and cut out a character. And he told her to do Goofy. So she went into it thinking he was trying to sabotage her. So he was like, she's like, I'm determined to get Goofy done. She did it, figured out how to use the jigsaw, uh, figured out that Goofy had needed a lot of sanding around his edges. And she said she felt like she was still vibrating when she took the Goofy to her boss, you know, to show him what she had done. And he, obviously he said she did a good job, but she is, kind of sassy so when she's mad she gets sarcastic she was frustrated and she said to him uh that since he wanted her to do what the carpenter did that she thinks the carpenter should do the painting of her goofy and make sure the x reviewed his color or make sure the x intensio reviewed his color uh matching and line work so he's like well she's like if i had to do the carpenter's job make the carpenter do my job like um so she made her point but she did get a raise uh all the way up to 280 an hour and the carpenter became her husband so the carpenter she was like joking about um and he never had to paint a disney character cut out (laughs) so i'm gonna stop there with mary Irvine Elliott today, and we've got some more fun stories to share about her and how she pushed the envelope in Imagineering next time. But I just thought that was a fun story to show how women of Imagineering literally had to be forces for themselves um, and pave the way. So she's she's a good one to start with. Perfect. Um, you're doing that from a book, right? You're getting all this from a book? Yeah, I do have the uh, Women of Walt Disney Imagineering book. Nice. And we're going to be doing so, for a while, right? We can switch back and forth, but okay. we're going to deal with... I, wor- I worded that wrong, so... But, um, <laughs> but you know. we're going to do Maggie for another week or two, and then we'll... Love it. Okay. Um, we'll switch to X or someone. Okay. Oh, he. I love him. You know, I love X, X you, too. You know, you know, X is the reason that, that he brought the people together for for the Haunted Mansion, because Claude mm-hmm. Coates and... and um, was it Mark Davis? Was John Mark? Hinch? No. Who was, no, it was, who was Mark Raleigh? Davis. Mark and Raleigh Crump. And... Ra- Raleigh was Ra- Raleigh helped. It was the two creative ones. It was John. It was um it was Mark Davis and Claude Coates were battling yep. as to what as to But what they really were it. Well, ex- Claude, ex- Alan, well, no, no. I talked to Claude's son about it, Alan, and he said that that was not he said people made that a lot bigger than it was than it was. He said everyone else made it a lot bigger. The Imagineering story even made it a lot bigger. That's where I heard that at. I mean, I can probably find the audio of Alan saying that his just, dad never had that. Why don't you just have him come on here? I can try. I tried having Raleigh come on. I told you that, he's, right? He's in uh, his time. And we would have to pre-record with him a different time because he yeah. is in Europe. Okay. I'll, I'll do it whenever. But I, I, I emailed Raleigh Crump a couple of months ago and he, his assistant e- emailed me back saying that Raleigh's reading this, but we're not doing interviews right now, basically. So it was kind of cool that they even read it. So I thought that was nice, but we got to get that golden ticket of Bob Gurr. I want Bob Gurr. That'll be my crowning moment. If we get Bob Gurr on the show, we might just end it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't top it. We'll be done. Let's go, let's go out Bye on guys. top. Yeah. Gotta go. But um, yeah. 
Uh, so that was that. And then I think that's it. So Imagineering. So now all we have left is our Disney parks. Did you know segment ladies first, Brianna, give me something. Did you know Mm -mm. that Hollywood studios and Walt Disney world was actually a working studio and it produced three of our famous animated movies that we all know and love. Uh, move on. Lilo and Stitch yes. and Brother Bear. Oh my gosh. Well, two out of three. Along with some others. <laughs> but <laughs> those are the big. <laughs> it also did some TV series. Um, I know I think they did some just like some exterior shots and some stuff for the Golden Girls. We love you, Betty White. <laughs> oh, wait till you. Oh my gosh. Um, speaking of Betty White, listen to the Waltz Department Live. Oh no. Brock, yeah. Oh no. Just listen. Yeah. Barry was on. What does that tell you? <laughs> it told me that it was probably good that I wasn't there because yeah. I probably would have been threatened three times. We didn't talk about the Muppets <laughs> once. It was crazy. We wow. didn't even bring the Muppets once. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, oh, but you uh, bet Sean threw Namor in there. <laughs> last minute. Yeah, we had to do that. Um, Sam, give us a little something. All right. So the Disney World Railroad uses a train that's actually from the 1910s. Um, it's a functional steam power train that carries 1.5 million passengers each year. Uh, well, the not, four not for the last few years. Though. Not for the last few years. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the four trains were originally built between 1916 and 1928, and they have been restored to run in tip-top shape, but they are that old. Dang. Are they named the same? Are they? Is, do they have the same names as the ones at Disneyland? Do you guys know, like the Ward Kimball and? No, um, I think they're different. So they're named after different events. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. I know that. I think all the trains are from that era, even the ones in Disneyland as well, because mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, Walt. trains were super Walt. important to Walt, like yeah. as you were talking about with Carowood Pacific. Mm-hmm. Which was amazing seeing that little mini train. Oh my God, I wanted to just hop on and ride it. But I probably got kicked out. Um, Lewis. Yeah, they are the Walter E. Disney, the Lily Bell, uh, Roger E. Brogy, and Roy O. Disney. I mean, that totally makes sense for those four then. Yeah. All right, Mr. Lewis, what do you got for me? So I didn't have uh, one that was as in depth that they were sharing but Mm -hmm. given that we started the episode with Walt's museum and the love that he had for his wife in case anyone didn't know the petrified tree in disneyland was a wedding oh i didn't know that That yeah the the petrified tree right outside of golden horseshoe to the left um was a gift from walt to lillian and then she shared it's such a beautiful gift you got to put it in the park and that's where it sits yeah, it's, it was so beautiful. She didn't want it in her damn house, so she said, "Take it to the, take it to the park and put it there somewhere." Yeah, it's just like randomly in the middle of nowhere, but it's the, it's really cool. To, yeah, that 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 is awesome. That is a great story. Um, mine is I don't know. Do you guys want to hear about Space Mountain, or do you want to hear about the beginning of Disneyland? You Disneyland. pick. I'm gonna go with this one here. When Walt Disney first bought the plot of land on which Disneyland now resides. His team marked the trees with colored ribbons to signify which should be cut down and which should remain. Unfortunately, the worker in charge of logging was colorblind and cut down almost all of the wrong trees. Take that with you. I did not know that. You did not know that? Oh, I'm going to give you the other one, too, because I got two. I'm going to hit you with another one. Uh, Space Mountain has only left turns except for the first and last turn. What's your both right turns? Well, of course, they're both right. What's your both right turns? What else would it be? They're, what's your both right turns? And they blow wind in your face to make it feel like it's going faster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Disney, if you change Space Mountain to Buzz Lightyear Mountain or something like that, come on. I'm just saying, don't do it. Please. Don't. No, Lightyear was a buzz, Disney. Let it go. Let's move on. <laughs> I don't think it was a buzz. I think they made money, so it's not going to be a bust. And they're going to make all the money off the merch. I mean, it I was a. It bursted my happiness bubble. We can all agree that um, the cat stole that show. Socks Heck yeah, was amazing. Socks was a man. So- and, uh, bought and my Taika- daughter a happy meal today. And Taika Waititi's character. That was him, right? With the pen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh a pen. 
God. That was one of the things where I was like, if he says it one more time. Yeah, it was, like, I think Sam, I think you said Sam that it was very predictable. I think you said that we talked about last week. I, just, he was he was the most annoying character to me. Yeah, um I see that. But because he just kept messing everything up and I wanted to punch him. Um <laughs> All right. I don't even remember uh, yeah. what I wanted to say at this point. Well, I think I that's know. it. We did it again. We did another hour. It's the extra magic actual hour, which is great. <laughs> Except that 1640 is going to be a little bit shorter because i got to cut out a little something there. So, um, but yeah. Lewis, thanks for joining us, buddy. Absolutely. Yeah. Brianna, thank you. Yeah. Is that my Elliot back there still? It is. Um, I realized that the boxes I have uh, don't fit because their wings are too big and then the little pieces on their head stick out. We can do one of two things. We can wait two months. I can pick it up when I'm down there. Or if you want to send it, by all means, you can send it. Just let me know how much it is. Mm -hmm. I will. I was like, I got to look for, because I was like, I got to send Joey's too. Yeah. So if I find a good box, I'll send it. There you go. All right. And then Sam, thank you so much. Appreciate you all. I'm glad we do this. This I love doing this show. And that we have some cool news stories to talk about because I didn't come up with them. So I think maybe someone else will be in charge of bringing up the news stories from now on. So this is great. So I appreciate you guys all. And from all of us here at Walt's Apartment, Extra Magic Hour, DisneySider.com, whatever else, we hope you have a magical day. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.